Hey, welcome to Bleacher Talk. I'm Claudia Collins alongside Jordan Spurgeon. And we're, we're back. back. We're back. We're finally back. <laughs> we we made it here. We're here. <laughs> we're live at Valle Luna in Chandler. We're having a great time. Some great food, chips and salsa all over Always. the place. Really can't go wrong there. We're catching up with some coaches today. It's really, we're having a good time. It's, yeah. it's still spring, but football's right around the corner. Yeah, for real. And I feel like there's so much that we're already looking forward to because it's already been an exciting off season. I know we've been seeing a lot going on. I mean, you've been talking about the weight room a whole lot. So what have you been seeing? Um, there has been some weight room warriors this year. I've seen so many guys putting up big numbers. I just ran track actually with, with Daxon Hall over at Higley High School. He's a sophomore squatting over 390 pounds. He says he has 405 in the bag. I haven't seen it on video yet told him to invite me out since I live down the street. We'll see about that. Uh, we ran track. I'm not going to spoil what happened in track, but um, he's fast and I'm not as fast as I used to be in high school. So okay. we'll leave it at that. Are any of us? Yeah. Me. So seeing a little bit of that, <laughs> went out to a track meet when I was doing some video with him, saw Damon Williams Jr. from Bachelor High School out there running track, uh, Dady Buchanan as well, bunch of different football guys out there, some big offensive linemen throwing the discus and the javelin. It's, it's cool seeing all the football players do other things, saw a few play basketball. So I'm just loving seeing all of that. Yeah. And I, you know, what I'm really <laughs> looking forward to is another Chandler Saguaro matchup. I don't know if you saw, but we get another one. Yes, in September. Woo. So we're not even talking open division. Still yet. be hot we're outside talking, and hot yep, on the field. Yep, it's going to look a little different, but I'm really excited to see that matchup really early on in the season. Excited that they chose to schedule that game. And speaking of Chandler, I'm also really looking forward to seeing their new quarterback that came in from Texas, number one quarterback in the nation, according to some sources. So I'm looking forward to see Dylan Rayola take the field. Uh, it'll it'll be a good time, I think. Yeah, there's going to be a lot going on. One more player I have to mention. I'm going to go out and watch him play baseball at some time this year. Rock. Chalowski over at Hamilton High School. Got a sneak peek of him in 2020 in the playoffs when he filled in for Nico Marchio when he was her legit quarterback, but he's also one of the top baseball prospects in the state, playing for one of the top teams in the nation. I'm excited to go see him play, and I'm really excited to see what he does at quarterback this year. He's filling in big shoes for Nico Marchio, but he seems like the kind of athlete that's up for the task, so there's so much going on, but that's beside the point for the yeah. fall. Claudia, we caught up with a few coaches today that we we're going to talk about. We got a lot going on today. Earlier today, we caught up with three coaches, all yep. new coaches. So it's a new coaches show for all of you. We got Joseph <laughs> Ortiz over at Perry. And then at Desert Vista, we've got Nate Gill. And then coming up from Casa Grande, we've got another coach, Jake Barrow, who is new at Corona Del Sol. It's going to be an exciting time getting to catch up with these coaches. We laughed a little bit. We heard about who the MCs are, who the captains are. We learned that one of them is actually a really good chef. So I think we should just let them see these interviews, right? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Stick with us. Now we're joined by new Perry head coach Joseph Ortiz and Coach Ortiz are coming over from Cactus and we'll, we'll jump right into this. But how are you getting settled in at Perry so far? It's been easy. It's been great. Uh, admin's been super supportive, getting you know the weight room going and uh, getting our offseason program going. So it's been a really smooth transition. Uh, coach Jones has been awesome handling that situation, uh, helping me transition as the new head coach there. Um, but I couldn't ask for a better start to taking over Perry. Now I feel like every coach has like a theme or a motto that they bring to their team. What do you feel like is the theme that you're bringing to the Perry Pumas? Um, it's just day by day. You know, we got to get better day by day. You know, we're, they were three and eight last year, so now we just got to try and get better day by day. And then, um, you know, we, that's going to be our mantra in the off season. And then in the season, we're going to be uh, prove them wrong. You know, not a lot of people don't think we're going to be pretty good this year, but I see what we have in the weight room, and you know, being there for a couple months now, I'm pretty excited about what we have. I've seen some of the weight room videos, and actually, I've seen I've seen a lot on social. Are you the one running a lot of the Perry Football Social now, or someone else doing it? Oh, yeah, I, I I run most of the social media, but I also have uh, Miss uh, Jacqueline Walker. She's one of my boosters, who me and her kind of team up. She's the head of uh, um, social media at our for our football program. So me and her kind of tag team that together. Spurge and I <laughs> love talking off the field stuff. And before we got on camera, I heard you're a bit of a chef, like tweeting out, you know, different recipes and stuff. If you got to get your guys to like beef up before the season, what are you cooking up for them? Oh, steak all day. That's my number one thing. I love to make steak, trying it new ways, uh, steak and potatoes all day. Well, well, rare, medium. I mean, how are you cooking it? Uh, it's got to be medium rare, man. <laughs> That's really awesome. <laughs> well,
Well, I cover recruiting for Sports 360 AZ, and you just told me a bit about Aiden Herring, who just got a big offer from Army. Tell me a little bit about what you've seen from him. Uh, he's kind of been the leader right when I got there. You know, he's a big frame kid, strong. He maxed out at 480 with the squat. He's only going to get more and more offers. A great leader. Yes, so, yes sir, no sir was the first one to kind of come and introduce himself. So he's bought in right away, you know, knowing the, the leader of that team. When he bought in, everyone else just kind of bought in too, and it's been the kids have all followed behind him. Imagine if he gives him more steak, too. <laughs> he might fall even more in love. <laughs> Speaking of that, so you, you've noticed he's a leader already. How do you go about when you enter a new program finding who those leaders are in the program, the guys that have been coming through the JV ranks and the freshman ranks as leaders at those levels? How are you figuring out those? Is it your coaching staff, too, or how does that work? Yeah, it's just, you know, in, in influencing how we coach. You know, we're a very player-friendly uh, organization, and we're going to see which players – buy into that the fastest and those are usually the leaders so the ones that buy into that the fastest they kind of they buy into that and then it just kind of resonates throughout the whole program so we're actually you know we had some kids that have been stepping up so it's uh, very encouraging to see that the leaders that we're going to have are are really good kids and it's just going to you know grow our program even better i know it's early but is there any pressure you want to put on some of them that you think might end up being your captains this year at this point uh, you know there, there's a couple you know there's um colton coleman and and um you know, Aiden Herring, obviously, uh, Bartnick, we got Bartnick there. There's some good, there's some good kids, and, but they've already stepped up, and, you know, the energy's in the weight room, and they're, they're, they love lifting, and that's unlike I've, where I've ever been. Well, later in the show, we're going to have Nate Gill and Jake Barrow on, and you mentioned, you know, they're on your schedule this season. What do you know about those two programs, and what excites you overall about this schedule? Yeah, you know, coming from 4A level, you know, we got a little taste of 6A and open division playing Saguaro. I got a taste of that with Saguaro last year. So, you know, knowing the schedule, I mean, you're in the premier region. You know, you're playing Chandler, Hamilton, and Basha, and Castile, all legitimate programs. But then uh, after we come back from Vegas, we play Desert Vista, you know, and Coach Gill's a great coach. You know, we're definitely happy for him that he got that Desert Vista job. Definitely a great uh, job to have. Um, but he's... Um, you know, they're going to be good. They're going to be well coached. They're, they got a lot of athletes over there. They got a lot returning. Um, and then Corona, they got a really good uh, quarterback. You know, Barrows had really good quarterbacks, so he's going to have Ackerley over there, and they're going to have some good athletes. So it's going to be a battle and a grind. You know, week in and week out in the in the 6A premieres, you know, it's it's a hard work. It's grinding every single week, and I, that was one of the main things that attracted me to coming to Perry. So what's the message to the team now, especially you're coming from a winning culture that you've developed at Cactus, you got to the open division, so you've seen what it takes and you've seen what kind of player buy-in does. This is a program now that has had a rough couple years and you're looking to turn that around and some of these seniors haven't been able to win at the varsity level just yet. So what are you telling them as far as preparing to, to take the next step this year? I think, you know, for me as a coach, you know, I didn't never played college football. I was five foot seven, hundred and nothing pounds, you know. I was scrappy. I had to scratch and claw. So that's kind of my coaching mentality is to be that scrappy type coach and just that kind of feeds off on our kids and be scrappy. Like at Cactus, we were small. You know, we had a lot of two way guys. We were you know, our quarterback was Will Galvin, one of the best kids in the state of Arizona, but he's five seven. You know, but we were just scrappy, and that's what I, I'm going to preach. You know, we have the size at Perry, you know, but we need to get that scrappy relentlessness, relentlessness and not quit to show that we can we be able to, in a, you know, this season and moving on forward that we're going to be in that open top five consideration, premier region champion consideration every year. So what are you going to be looking for in spring ball? I know you guys are starting in May, and that's when you're going to really get going beyond just weight room stuff. What are you looking for in your team just for laying the foundation at that point? You know, getting ready for summer sevens, you know, and big man challenges and implementing our offense and defense and knowing that, you know, it's a long process. You know, we, we're, we're going to go we're going to go five days a week. You know, we're doing two showcases this year, you know, to showcase, get these kids recruited. You know, that's another big part of spring ball is getting our kids recruited as well. So but just implementing our offense and defense and then buying into our culture. You know, we'll be playing the music out there. We'll be having, you know, we'll, we will do like a spring game or we're, you know, I'm seeing it. You know, it's just going to be a real fun event. Just let them know that we're, we're going to have fun. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of grinding, it's a lot of hours, you know, it's a lot of commitment, but we're going to have fun while we do it, and that's what's kind of, as me only being a head coach for four years, that's bred success for me as a head coach. Well, fun is exactly what we do, <laughs> so I'm going to close it out with one last fun question. Um, who's the guy that you think is going to break out, like, the touchdown dance moves or kind of be the loud one in the locker rooms? I know these guys are all kind of new to you, but who am I going to be excited about seeing on the field breaking out the, the moves? Probably our quarterback Jack Ammer. <laughs> you know he's he's not uh, he's not shy. So I'm really looking forward to you know seeing him and you know him buying into the program as our as our quarterback. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We enjoyed getting to yep. know you and your program a little bit more. Appreciate it, Coach. <laughs>
Hey everyone, welcome back to Bleacher Talk. I'm Claudia Collins alongside Jordan Spurgeon and Nate Gill, the new head coach over at Desert Vista. You came from Sierra Linda, but you're going over to a program now that's had a lot of coach turnover in the last few years. I mean, just tell me a little bit about how you've been settling into this program. Um, it started off crazy busy. I'm glad to be settling in at this point. Um, plan to be there for a while and <laughs> And um, just getting to know the guys and, and understanding the community and, and the, the rich tradition that Desert Vista has, not just football, but as a, as a whole. So You hear that thunder? He's going to be there a while. I'm sure they <laughs> like hearing that. That's the plan. So day one when you get in there and you have a meeting with the guys, I assume, how'd that go for you? What was that like? The, the energy was, was great. The, the guys were, were extremely excited and, and eager to get going. Um, you know, we have a, we have a, a strength program on campus um, at, at DV, so it's already rolling it as far as that part goes, but I think I think the guys were over the suspense side of things. They wanted to know who, who their coach was going to be, uh, and I'm sure during during the time they, they heard a, a host of different names, so they were excited to, to, to meet me, and, and um, the, the energy was good, and I definitely left that first meeting knowing I made the right decision. You know, I've gotten to see the Thunder quite a bit um, in this past season, and I know that their motto was all gas, no breaks last season. What do you feel like is the theme or motto that you're bringing to this team? Um, I feel like I feel like we need to need to add toughness. So um, we'll we'll go by just DV grit. We'll have we'll have DV grit, and um, we'll we'll compete for however long it takes. That's that's what we'll hang our hat on. So is that being established in the weight room right now? Like as far as how it's going? Yes, like that's that's the attitude, that's the mentality, and um, here and there I get an opportunity to to go in the, the first hour. We're still making the, the commute between two schools, but um, I get to go in and, and, and see the guys, and the, the energy's up, and um, they're they're bought in. Who are some of the strongest guys in the weight room you have so far that you've seen? Um, it's gonna, it's gonna pain me to say this in, in some ways because I, th these guys absolutely love themselves, but um. Antonio Delgado really, really sticks out. Um, he texts me just about every day, you know, this, you know, the records from his lift and, you know, how many reps he did and, <laughs> and, and all those things. But overall, overall, a, a, a strong team. And uh, we, have, we have some guys that, that are really flourishing in, in, the, in the spring sports. And um, th those results, I believe, will, will carry over. I'm glad you mentioned the spring sports because we cover a lot of multi-sport athletes. We really like seeing their performance, you know, off of the football field as well in other sports. Who are some of the guys that are standing out to you in those spring sports that excite you, you know, as spring ball approaches? So um, at, at Desert Vista, we have a, a, a ridiculous amount of, <laughs> of um, activities for the student athletes to get into. So we have lacrosse right now, track right now, baseball. Um, we have we have about about between 40 and 50 football guys running track and um and I, w I would guess maybe another 20 that that participate in lacrosse so um they're doing a, doing a good job you know not specializing and in, in getting involved in something else um and I, I don't really care to to put anybody's name out there because they're already into themselves and um, I, I'd rather I'd rather not but um we have we have Ryland, who's a who's a, a freshman that's doing a tremendous job. He's actually on the varsity relay team. Um, Michael Allison's bounced back strong from from a, a knee injury. Um, Antonio Delgado um, thinks he's a sprinter. No, he's actually competing really well in in the um, in the sprints. And we have some guys, a, a ton of guys doing lacrosse. Um, Gavin Chavez and some and some other guys. So um, they're, they're not just sitting around and. And, and being lazy after after school, they're, they're getting into some some things, and it, it allows them another opportunity to compete, which I'm a fan of. Now, this is a team that was five and five last season. What are you going to do to get, you know, the Thunder above 500? Um, we're we're going to chase our best every day. Um, we're going to get after it at practice, compete, compete, compete. That's that's my thing. And um, if you if you go back and watch the video, um, th those. Some of those games were decided by, you know, just the small details, and we want to really hone in on, on, the, on the details. So you talked about, you know, you got, you got athletes all over playing different sports, and you got a lot of them in the weight room. So once summer comes along and you really get into the heart of the season, you get there, 
How do you go about picking some of the leaders on your team? I know that's an important thing when you come into a new program. What do you do to start see who kind of stands out for those roles? All right. Well, the the great thing is they're they're all in the in the strength program together. So I, I do I do get to see those guys, you know, and their their work ethic and and those things. Um, they they might not think I'm paying that close attention, but I'm I'm absolutely um, checking out who the who the natural leaders are and um, some other things that go into that. You know work ethic, attitude, are you a good teammate when it's not your day? And um, and also the academic piece. You, you can't can't lead the group if, if if we can't even get you to go to class. So, I got to ask too, because me and Claudia were there the week of the Tukey Bowl and we were doing a live show there. What do you know about the Tukey Bowl? I've heard about the Tukey Bowl probably every day. And um, <laughs> it's it's important. I know, I know it's a, a huge deal and we want to continue to, you know, promote it and make it a big deal and um, it's a it's a game that we're we're excited about at the at the same time we're, we're not not looking past anybody um, we, we got to go out and, and, and compete year I mean not year in and year out but week in and, and, and week out well the Tukey Bowl is a good time I will tell you that from experience we're a good time I will tell you that from experience <laughs> Bleacher Talk we're all about keeping things fun and light so who's that guy in the locker room that's always like best mood possible loudest guy in the locker room so far that you've gotten to know <laughs> i'm tired of saying delgado's name <laughs> um he's a he's a, a big time energy guy and um we we have a, we have some other guys that 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 get after it but I, I i would say i would say him and him and michael allison probably bring the juice the most and um and gavin chavez gives me the most trouble i'd say this isn't the first time that Delgado's name has been dropped for his personality, so you're not the first one yeah. to, to share that. And, and Christian Clark likes to give me a hard time too. So, uh, no, o overall a, a good group of guys, and they don't lack energy, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Coach, I think that's all we got for you. Thank you so much for joining us today, and best of luck this year. Right. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Stick with us when we come back. We'll have Jake Barrow <laughs> joining us. Welcome back to Bleacher Talk. I'm Jordan Spurgeon alongside Claudia Collins and new Corona Del Sol head coach Jake Barrow. Coach, thank you for joining us today. You're making quite the journey down there to Corona Del Sol, right? Coming up from Casa Grande? Yeah, it's, you know, I kind of grew up in the East Valley area, so it's a familiar area for me, but, you know, it's definitely a change, uh, you know, coming up from small town feel to, you know, the East Valley and, and such a big school. But it's, uh, it's familiar and it's, uh, it's a welcome feeling. It's more of a homecoming then for you, absolutely, right? In a lot of ways, yeah, it, it really is. I mean, I, I've had a family come through Corona del Sol. My grandfather coached football there when the school opened uh, in 78. Um, so it, it really is a, a bit of a homecoming. So it's bittersweet to leave Casa Grande, you know, a lot of good memories there, a lot of good people. But it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. It's, it's exciting. One of those memories, I'm sure, is the 4A state title. I mean, we can't we can't go this entire show without talking about that. So tell me a little bit about like your coaching style and what you think brought you to that state title and how you're going to bring that to Corona del Sol. Well, I think the biggest thing that I kind of evolved as a coach, uh, you know, through my years at Castle Grand was really listening to the players, building relationships with the players and allowing them to play within their own style. You know, so many coaches want to, fit players to their style and as coaches that's that's great we all have our beliefs and, and our own styles but it really is the player's game and you know especially with today's young athletes you want to get to know them what really helps them and, and help them reach their full potential by allowing them to play this game within their own personalities and I think you know I, I kind of evolved within that in my own coaching style and you know it changes week to week it changes player to player but by doing that and building those relationships, you help your players reach their full potential. And um, I, I think that was kind of the turning point for us, just allowing these kids to be kids and play the game they love. And, and we're there to guide them, not to fit them into our mold. Well, you've worked with quarterback Angel Flores <laughs> over at Casa Grande. Now you've got Connor Ackerley. Tell me a little bit about what you've seen from him, because he seems to kind of be that emerging player. Yeah, Connor's been great. I mean, I think... From the minute I, I got the job, he was wanting to study the playbook. He was wanting to know what the new <laughs> offense is going to be. And, and he's been studying it. He's been all over everything. You know, he, he calls me, texts me with questions. What's, 
what's you know what is this play what's the read here what's and so many times I'm just telling him be patient we'll get there um, but but he's so eager and he wants to be great he wants to really really embody that team leader uh, uh, mold and and being a sophomore last year as a quarterback it's tough um, but but I see a lot of the things I saw in Angel as a young quarterback I see a lot of that in Connor wanting to be a young leader a good quarterback and um, just eager to be great and, and to lead his team so I've seen nothing but great things out of Connor and I'm really excited to see where he progresses. So Connor stood out to you right away but when you walked in day one and you, and you chatted with the team what was that like for you how'd that go? You know uh, immediately you could see these were kids that just they wanted to work they wanted to be great um, you know they had the work ethic they had the drive it was just maybe you know they just wanted some direction um, and not you know the previous coach John Bechtold I, I know him very well he was great, you know. It just time, he retired, so it was just time for him to kind of move on to another chapter in his life, and uh, you know that allowed me to kind of step in and, and guide these kids in, in a different way, and so they were just eager, wanted to work, wanted to learn, and it was just it was really welcoming, you know, for me because sometimes that's a tough transition for kids, especially going to be a senior, you know, it's all this senior class. Getting a new coach your senior year is tough, uh, but they were nothing but open and, and to the new ideas and the new system. And I, I'm, I'm excited for them because I really think they're going to buy in. Speaking of buying in, what's the weight room been like for you? I'm always interested in the weight room stuff in the offseason. I see videos at pretty much every high school out here of so many kids putting a big weight. What's that been like so far? A great buy in. I mean, we get them in there at uh, 6 a.m. every morning. Uh, you know, for the kids that have the class, they're there anyways. For the ones that don't, they, they get there early and get it done. Um, so it's been great, great buy-in uh, from the, the freshmen all the way up to the going to be seniors. Um, so that that's where it starts, obviously, as you said, in the weight room. The strength and conditioning is the foundation of every football program. And so for these kids to want to attack that as hard as they have and buy into it, and, you know, they're not scared from getting up early and getting in there and working hard before they go to school and get in class, um, you know, they, they embrace it. They embrace the grind. And um, if, if we keep doing that, we keep embracing it and attacking it the way we are, it's going to lay a really good foundation for us moving into the summer. Okay. Which guys are starting to stand out to you as potential leaders, maybe captains even? Yeah, it, it's obviously very <laughs> early, but, you know, the seniors are going to be what drives this team. So guys like Jake Carbajal, Jonathan Kubat, uh, Ryan Cook, there's a lot of really, really – Matthew Orthman on the defensive side of the ball. There's a lot of really, really good uh, – you know, kids that have leadership qualities and they've embraced the program. They're talking to me about different ways that they can help, that they can be leaders, that they can, you know, really help the younger kids along. And, and you know, maybe these are some lessons they learned as young kids uh, that they just want to share. So I think, you know, those four have, have really stood out just as being seniors and wanting to lead. And the more we move through the spring and summer here, I'm, I'm expecting big things from them. And I really think they're going to embrace, you know, not just the varsity leadership, but freshmen and JV as well, making it all one program, one family. So far, we've heard <laughs> day by day over at Perry, gritty at Desert Vista as the mottos for the season. So what is Corona Del Sol's motto for this season? So, you know, <laughs> the big thing you're going to see everywhere is bleed orange, bleed orange. Bleed orange. And, and that's okay, what yep. they go with, and, and I love it. And I've really embraced it. I've kind of taken their motto on because the bleed orange, you know, that, that just shows that Corona's in your DNA. It's, it's who you are. It's a family. And, and so I loved it from day one. And, and it's just, you know, it's more than just football. It's who we are. It's in our DNA. It's, it's, it's what we are every day. You know, you're born for it. It's kind of thing. So it's really cool, and I've embraced it. And you're going to see that everywhere. You know, if you follow my Twitter, it's at the end of everything I say. <laughs> bleed orange. So um, that's what we go by. The, the kids started it, and I've embraced their motto, so to speak. Who are some of the guys you have playing different sports? Are you still getting a chance? Are they still lifting together, the guys that are playing other spring sports like track or baseball or lacrosse or anything like that? Yeah, so we have a lot. Um, and, and obviously multi-sport athletes is what makes high school sports great, and it's what makes the best high school sports, in my opinion. Um, you know, Connor Ackerley that you mentioned, quarterback, he's a baseball player. Um, you know, we had several basketball players when I first got there. Um, a lot of guys in track and field, our running back's a sprinter. Um, many of our receivers are sprinters and hurdlers. So, it, it, you know, and you have to kind of balance that, obviously. We want to hit the weight room hard, but we also need to be respectful of spring sports and what they're doing. So those guys are still working hard. They're still involved with everything we're doing. Sometimes their workouts are tailored to help them with their spring sports. Um, but the best thing as a coach is you're seeing them out there, you're seeing them compete. Whether it's baseball, track, tennis, 
anything. They're just out there competing, and they're getting better, and, and it's a different sport than them football, so it helps them be well-rounded, and it helps them be a better athlete for us in the fall. So we encourage them all to be multi-sport athletes, and, you know, we've got a lot doing it right now, and I'm excited for them because I get to watch. I don't have to coach. I get to go watch a baseball game, <laughs> watch a track meet, and just see how these kids interact with each other as a fan. So that's cool for me as well. So you're out there to everything you can be then, huh? I, I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, it's busy. I was joking with some of the other coaches. You know, when you move from one program to another, you kind of feel like you're treading water for, for the first few months. And so I'm still kind of in that mode. But but anytime I can go out and watch a, a baseball game, you know, even just to see how those how the coaches run their program and, and get a feel for the, the campus culture, it's, it's fantastic. You know, the students really have a lot of pride in going to sporting events and being part of it. And so going to all that stuff and just seeing how it is, it's important to me, and, and um, you know, I've been able to do a lot of it the last couple months. I'm excited to do more as we move towards the end of the school year. Yeah. Fall may feel far away, but we know it's going to sneak up on all of us. So what excites you about your schedule when you take a look at it? Well, week two, we play Chandler, and that's what excites me the most because, you know, you, you want to measure yourself against some of the best. So there, there's very few teams better than Chandler High. Um, so, you know, Coach Garrison does a great job. They have tremendous players. They have the number one quarterback in the whole country that, that we're going to see this year. So we're telling our kids right now, you know, if, if you want to see how good you are, you want to see how far you've come, there's no better way to measure that than against the best. And um, so, you know, you get team that was, you know, open division runner-up right, right there week two, you know, sitting and waiting for you. So we're excited for it. We have a really tough schedule. Um, you know, we play three of the Chandler schools for Freedom Games, which, you know, they're always really, really competitive, and, and they're always the top teams in the state. So uh, we like the challenge. We're embracing it, and it's just kind of a motivation for us to work a little harder. So, yeah, like you said, it feels like we've got all this time till, but, you know, I'm speaking now, and then all of a sudden <laughs> we'll be playing them, you know. So it, it is what it is, and we're excited to just – Take it step by step. What are you looking forward to about sevens and everything going on in summer? What are you looking forward to with that? Competition. Um, and that's what I love most about sevens and, and Lyman competitions is, you know, we, com we compete in the weight room. We compete with each other in spring ball. But getting to go against other teams and, and see other kids and, you know, kind of just the whole camaraderie that, that is, plays a part of that, that's what I love the most about it. So getting out there for seven on seven, you know, we're going to be really involved. We're going to be at Campo Verde every Tuesday in June. We're going to go to ASU, U of A, NAU, and we're just going to compete. We're going to have fun. We're going to be a team. We're going to compete. And, and I'm going to get to see how these kids work with each other, uh, especially, you know, against some adversity. You're playing other schools that are going to be tough, and you have to come together as a team and find out what you're going to do to win. So that's what I love most about it. That's what I'm most excited for. And, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm the new guy, so I get to kind of see – how these kids work together and and I'm you know it's a big moment for me just to make some evaluations throughout that summer I think Spurge and I will both close it out with a fun question I'll start with mine who's kind <laughs> of like the pump up guy I know we haven't had a game yet but like the loudest guy in the locker room that you could just imagine come fall he's gonna amp everyone up man that's a great question I think we have a few <laughs> of them um, you know get, just kind of seeing the guys around the weight room who's who's vocal who's loud who wants to get everybody kind of going um, you know Matthew Orthman is a, is a vocal leader uh, defensive lineman Jake Carbajal offensive lineman he, he kind of gets the lineman fired up Ryan Cook linebacker uh, Cambrell um, you know defensive back you know he's a younger he's going to be a junior but he's vocal he's got that you know fire I think my first team meeting with him he's the one that yelled and quieted everybody down so I was like oh okay there's the guy right there <laughs> um, so we have a few I, I think it's going to be an intense group which is great uh, they're not a quiet group, so I think you're, you're going to see three or four, five, six guys on the sideline really intense throughout these Friday nights. I'm going to go back to weight room. Who's in charge of – who's got the ox in the weight room? Is it you? Are you playing all the music oh, or is somebody else? So so it's probably the number one complaint right now, but it's me. It's all coming from me. Um, you know, it's, it's I play it safe. We're Pandora Radio, and we're just going. But uh, I think, you know, some of the kids look at me, can we do this? Can we have this? I'm, no, come on. This is, my, this is my playlist. What's wrong with my playlist? So uh, it's probably if, if you had to – if we had a little suggestion box in the locker room, it would probably mostly be new playlist in the weight room. But right now, right now I'm sticking <laughs> with it. That's All right, awesome. I got to ask. I know I said that it was one last question. But, like, what, what kind of music is coming up yeah. on this playlist? Well, Why are you getting complaints? Well, so so I'm not that cruel. We're listening to the rap, hip hop, everything they like. Yeah. But it's a little older. 
I mean, it's probably late mid '90s and early 2000s. But but yeah, right. I'm uh, yeah. So it's so I'm just telling them, you know, it, this is this is the good stuff, right? Yeah, you're doing them a favor. Thank you. I'm yeah, I'm teaching a class in just culture and, and all the way around. So you know, it's 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 an education, really. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. We can't wait to see you on the field this fall. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it, Coach. <laughs>Well, that's going to do it. We met three amazing new coaches. Best of luck to them leading their programs this year. We're here at Via Luna, really having a good time. I don't know about you, Claudia, but I smell a lot of good food. I'm getting kind of hungry, so I think it's time for some chips and salsa. Yeah, it's time to call it a night, <laughs> but I am ready for that chips and salsa and happy to have Bleacher Talk back with you, Spurge. It's always a good time. <laughs>